What's going on, everybody? My name is Bendy, and this is the Disney Heroes Forums. So today, we have a new update. Um, well, yesterday we had a new the, uh, the updated patch notes, but I didn't get a chance to check it out yesterday because I was finishing up the Arena Coliseum Guide stuff, so I didn't have time to do this reaction yesterday. Otherwise, I would have done two videos yesterday, but that's all right. I haven't checked anything out yet, so I don't know what to expect with this patch note at all, so I'm checking this out fresh. I think I got hinted to uh, one of the updates, so I'm making me very excited to check it out. But uh, I won't spoil anything for you guys if you guys don't know. But yeah, so first, I just want to thank you guys because I believe we are about to hit 600 subscribers. So thanks so much for that, guys. I really appreciate it. We are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. If you really want to help me out, um, even if you don't give a fuck about my channel, I would hugely appreciate it. Just drop in a subscribe, especially for a new YouTuber like me, really means the world. Um, I super duper appreciate everybody that has subscribed or even just checked out my channel for even like a couple minutes. I can't believe how quickly this is kind of growing. So thank you guys, you guys are awesome. So let's just get right on into it. Pretty excited to check this out, so I'm hoping these are some pretty lit patch notes. Alright, we got update 3.1.1. Zero patch notes. Welcome to the update. This release features the Sheriff of Nottingham from Disney's Robin Hood and Quacker Jack from Disney's Darkwing Duck. Ooh, we got another Robin Hood and Darkwing Duck. Okay, I see them. Plus a hero refresh for Shank! For Shank! Let's go! I knew I powered her up for a reason. Let's get right on into it because I'm very excited. Oh, look at you! Okay. I've never seen this dude in my life, just so you know. Uh, the Sheriff of Nottingham is a backline tank on the yellow team. Ooh, backline tank, that's different. Not a lot of um, backline tanks, most of them stand up front. Um, he's going to be an advent exclusive character in City Watch crates, so he's going to be kind of difficult to get the chips for, at least at first. Uh, the Sheriff of Nottingham's white skill. I do in my duty. It's not that kind of duty. The Sheriff of Nottingham increases the, his attack speed and also performs a different effect depending on the weapon he is wielding. When he has a bow, the Sheriff of Nottingham steals up to X basic damage from the enemy with the most basic damage and gives it to himself for a time. Alright, that sounds kind of cool. Uh, when he has his torch, he increases his armor and reality for a time. This effect is locked until he unlocks Torch Strike, which is his green skill. So basically, just instantly, either way. His green skill, Torch Strike, X seconds after the wave starts, he pulls out a torch and his basic attack switch to melee. He increases his armor for the rest of the wave and saps enemies every few basic attacks for... That's an incomplete sentence, per blue, just so you know. He also unlocks a new effect on doing my duty, which, yeah, is the... That thing that just sits there. So that was weirdly worded. Sharpshooter. At the beginning of each wave, the Sheriff of Nottingham shoots a well-aimed arrow at the closest enemy, dealing damage, knocking them back, reducing their attack and movement speed, and sapping them. Damn, that does a lot of stuff. His purple skill, sapped enemies deal less damage to the Sheriff of Nottingham. Okay. And his red skill, every few basic attacks, the Sheriff of Nottingham gains armor up to a max. Each enemy is cursed once per wave when they reach a percent of their max HP. And reviving does not clear this curse. Huh, that's interesting. I don't know if that really makes any difference for a lot of heroes, but very interesting. Um, his battle badge, when sap is applied to enemies, he gets a max HP boost, basic damage per tank roll hero, and um, he has increased, or he gets a plus heal thing, which I think is like 25% heal or some shit like that. And he has a friendship with Ham and Scrooge. Duck. So he seems interesting. Uh, he doesn't really pop out at me as being a super crazy hero. I'm gonna be honest, not super exciting looking. Doesn't even have true damage like Robin Hood does. But uh, the fact that he steals basic damage is kind of cool. So he'll be good against like Dash Mulan and uh, Duke and stuff like that. But um, yeah, just on paper, his kit doesn't look super exciting. So let's move on to Quacker Jack. All right, look at you, okay. You look kind of cool too, I've never seen this dude before either, so. Quackerjack is a midline control hero on the red team. Oh, what what color is uh, this dude on? Oh, he's on yellow, okay. I feel like I read that, but I didn't acknowledge it in my head, because I just woke up and I have my first coffee here. So good. Quackerjack is a diamond crate exclusive, so he's behind a money wall. So, his white skill. Terror Teddy. Passively, instead of a basic attack, Quackerjack cackles maniacally, gaining energy. At the start of each wave, Quackerjack summons a robot teddy bear with XHP that attacks enemies, dealing damage with each hit. Interesting. Active. If the teddy bear is not KO'd, Quackerjack causes it to explode, dealing damage to enemies around it. If the teddy bear is KO'd, Quackerjack resummons the teddy bear. 
Teddy bear sounds very interesting. I wonder if uh, this will be another invasion hero for us. Because Hyro is quite good, Jasmine used to be quite good, um, still is useful, and Kristoff is also. So we got all three, or not all three, but three heroes that um, have like a, a partner with them are quite good for invasion. So I wonder if Quackerjack is also going to be good for invasion. So I guess we'll find out. His green skill, history lesson. Quackerjack pulls out Mr. History. Scaring enemies and applying sacks of fatigue. Oh, another fatigue hero. Very fun. His blue skill, Banana Boom. Quackerjack throws Mr. Banana Brain at the enemy with the most stacks of fatigue and it explodes. Dealing damage to enemies in an area and additional damage per stack of fatigue each damaged enemy has. His purple skill, Bear Blow Up. The robot teddy bear applies stacks of fatigue to enemies nearby every few seconds and stacks of fatigue to nearby enemies when he is summoned with Terror Teddy. Um, so he definitely plays around with fatigue a ton. Have a feeling he's going to be the new king of fatigue. Um, going to take over Swedish Chef. If you don't know, fatigue it works the same as Hardy, but it gets applied to the enemy and it makes it so that a buff does not go off against um, for them. Say they got like a, an attack boost or something like that, it wouldn't go off and a fatigue would go away. You know what I mean? That's what fatigue does if you don't know. His red skill, Twisted Toy Maker. When Quackerjack uses Terror Teddy and summons the robot teddy bear, Scared enemies are also distracted. Distracted enemies prefer to target the robot teddy bear. The robot teddy bear deals damage per second to nearby enemies. Cool. So I feel like Quackerjack's going to be quite fun. I definitely think he might become the new king of fatigue. He sounds very fatigue heavy. I'm a little scared, not going to lie. He is a control hero, so it automatically means he might be pretty decent. <laughs> I feel like control heroes are just automatically the best heroes in the game. It's ridiculous. Um, anyways, so his battle badge. Um, when fatigue is applied to the enemy, he gets a basic damage boost and skill power per red team ally, and he uh, gains uh, reality negation. Battle badges, they're just kind of blah. Like, they're, they're super good to have and everything, but they're just so blah. Nothing very exciting about them, to be honest. Um, but he has friendships with Slinky and Lock, Shock, and Barrel. Why does he not have a friendship with Darkwing Duck? What the hell? Alright, so here's what I'm excited about. The hero refresh for Shank! It's that wonderful time again. It's a hero refresh. We love Shank's damage negation kit that allows her to do more damage with her white skill, but we felt she could use a push in a tankier direction. Ooh. We've pushed her deeper into her high armor niche and added distract to her kit. Oh yes. To make her new tankiness even more useful. Take a look. Alright, so she's got increased max HP, basic damage, and skill power. No increased armor though, which is kind of strange. So what they've done with Final Lap, which is the one that makes it so that she negates damage from each attack against her. So it increases the damage negated and it increases the damage that her car does. So that's pretty sweet. Hopefully she actually kind of does something because I feel like she's like running over people with a car, but I feel like it does like no damage. <laughs> I feel like it would kind of hurt a little bit if you get run over by a car, would it not? I don't know. Is that just me? Um, toughen up. When Shank reaches a percent of her max HP, she grants herself and allies additional skill power for the rest of the wave, and she grants herself armor for a duration, and she distracts all enemies for a duration. Increased skill power to herself and allies. Shank now grants herself armor for a duration, uh, and she gets distract. So distract the enemy's target target for the duration. Cool. Piston Slam. Um, this is just, she runs in, she did a little like, psh, elbow tap. Does increased damage over time, increased amount of HP healed as a percent of damage dealt. Oh yeah, and she heals herself with this. I didn't actually read it because I kind of know off the top of my head. But for those that don't know, it also heals her. This skill now deals bonus damage based on the amount of armor Shank currently has. Sick. I'm excited. I'm very excited. I hope she becomes at least a little bit better. Road Warrior um, gains extra armor. While Shank is distracting enemies, she negates more damage with her passive from Final Lap. I have like plus... 40 or something on this purple skill right now for my shank so we shall see how much armor she has i'm definitely going to check that on tuesday for sure because she already had pretty ridiculous armor on mine because of all the boost that i gave her i'm hoping that's even more ridiculous i guess we'll find out um and then her red skill final lap negates more damage against normal damage attacks shank and her allies take less damage from normal crits which is the same as what it was. When an enemy normal crits Shank, her armor is increased for the rest of the wave up to a max. Um, increased percent of damage final lap negates. Increased percent of reduced normal or normal crit damage. And Shank now receives armor for the rest of the wave. So, her memory discs. The Vanellope disc. Increased armor given to allies based on Shank's armor. Oh, yes. That's the one that I have. 
Now every few basic attacks, the remaining cooldown of Piston Slam is reduced. Nice. Um, and then the disc level is increased basic damage and armor. Cool. Lockdown is the disc. Uh, the Elastigirl disc is the one I don't use, but they increase the energy gain. And now if enemies are distracted when Shank uses final lap, she stuns them for a duration. And then she gets increased damage negated by final lap. I hope that Shank gets a little bit better. I love Shank. I've been powering her up over the last like several months and now she's like one of my like top 10 heroes for some reason and I didn't even really intend it. But yeah, she's super fun. Um, I try and use her whenever I can. She's a bit niche because she really only counters normal damage and is kind of useless against everybody else. But I'm really hoping that the increased armor and the increased negation is super useful. It doesn't actually say what the percentage is, so I guess we'll find out on Tuesday. I will definitely probably make a video just showing what my shank looks like. If you guys want to see that, definitely let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Maybe it'll just be like a short little mini video on Tuesday. Maybe I'll do like two videos on Tuesday or something like that. But yeah, if you guys want to see what my shank looks like on Tuesday after the update, I can even record a like before and after if you guys are interested in that. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments if you guys want to see something like that. Something a little bit different. Um, but anyways, so the bug fixes. Fixed a bug where Baloo could interrupt his white skill, causing it to end early. Fixed a bug where Tinkerbell would steal the shield from Esmeralda's red skill, but didn't give it to Peter Pan. Fixed an issue where Baymax wouldn't do his flying entrance if the only opponent was Baymax. Uh, Fixed an issue with Davy Jones' jest, where players would need to refight an invasion breaker battle even if they defeated all the opponents. I was thinking that Davy Jones bug fix would be the fact that he occasionally lives forever in cold base but um i don't know apparently they haven't caught on to that bug it's happened to me at least three or four times unless they just fixed it and didn't even tell anybody um fixed a bug where robin hood's precise buff was incorrectly removed when kermit's flight skill expired fixed an issue where the narrator's names could be incorrect in the friend campaign narrator's names oh is that like the the person that the friend disc is that's that's a confusing way to word that fixed a sizing issue with esmeralda oh esmeralda you were the were you too big or were you too small esmeralda these are the real issues in this game um other improvements added the gold and skill point counters to the top of the max hero skills screen added a tutorial for epic city watch rating powercraft is now a vip4 perk Ooh, all right so if you guys are free to play Powercraft is coming even earlier for you guys now, so that's very cool. What this means, I think, is that um, Power Promote is going to be a VIP 5 perk, while Power Craft, which is the slightly lesser version of it, is going to be VIP 4. So now, it's probably only going to be like $10 for you guys to get Powercraft, so definitely highly recommend. I still recommend everybody get VIP 5, but definitely going to be even easier now. Because Powercraft is definitely the number one reason that you wanted VIP 5 in the first place. So VIP 4 is super worth it. We've changed the way cosmetics work with exclusive heroes. While a hero is exclusive to a special event crate, such as the crates, sign-in, or arena coliseum challenger exclusive, um, their collection will be hidden until the player has the hero unlocked. Cosmetics for that hero will not drop from crates until the player has the hero unlocked. And they fixed some random little stuff with Power Promote. Alright, so we got cap rays. Servers 1 through 5 are going to 250, yellow 3, chapter 44, and we are getting Carl, Jumba, and Clawhauser in Elite Campaign. That's kind of lit. Clawhauser going to Elite Campaign is pretty sweet. I really need to work on Clawhauser. I'm just so behind on that. Sheriff of Nottingham is going to be in City Watch crates, and Quackerjack is going to be in Diamond crates. Um, server 13, you guys are going to 245. You guys are getting yellow plus two, and the same elite campaign stuff as us. Um, server 14, you guys are going to be. Oh, you guys aren't getting yellow yet. I thought you guys were getting yellow this month. Oh man, that sucks. That means I lied on my tier list. I thought this was the month that you guys were getting yellow rank, but I guess it's next month, so. Uh, that kind of sucks, but you guys are going to 230, red 19, and the same elite campaign stuff as us. Server 18, you guys are going to 215, uh, red 16, or it's, it's re D16. Um, same stuff, same stuff. Server 19, you guys are going to 200, red 13, chapter 34, you guys are getting Angel, Kronk, and Carl Jumba Clauser. So Angel going to elite campaign, I don't know where she was before for you guys, but pretty lit. I love Angel. Kronk is also quite good. I need to work on him more too. Definitely use that Isma disc, it's super helpful against Freeze. Just a random Kronk tip for you guys. Um, servers 21 through 24, you guys are going to 190, red 11, and the same thing as the previous one, Angel Kronk, Carl Jumbo Clawhauser. Pretty sweet. This is planned for Tuesday, June 22nd. 
So this is a pretty sick update. I like it. I feel like we didn't get an update last week when we were supposed to, so this is probably making up for it. But we got two new heroes and we got a shank update. Very exciting. I don't think Sheriff of Nottingham sounds very exciting, but Quackerjack sounds really cool. A lot of fatigue. I might work on Quackerjack. He just sounds very interesting and fun. Definitely more excited about Quackerjack than I am for Sheriff of Nottingham, but I guess we'll find out. I always seem to be wrong with all of these predictions. I was super wrong about Wasabi, and then what else was I super wrong about? I was super wrong about somebody else, but I was mainly just super wrong about Wasabi. I remember that specifically because I was just like, oh, Wasabi doesn't sound very exciting. He doesn't have any like exciting sounding skills or anything, and then here we are. Wasabi is like the best damage hero in the game. But anyways, that's just my prediction. Um, I'm hoping that Shank gets a lot better. I'm rooting for you, Shank. I'll be the first to let you guys know if Shank is good. Don't worry. All right, so that's going to be it. If you guys like my videos, Definitely give me a like, subscribe, comment. I would hugely appreciate it. And yeah, that's going to be it. So, um, peace. Metron is almost 3 million Oh, shit. Evil Queen is now the new background for the really good category. One, two, three, four, five. Fuck them up. I love Pooh.